Hey guys, Brian from Snowwalker Bushcraft. Today we're going to continue on the art of tracking and we're going to talk about the rabbit order. Don't go away. So the species that are within the rabbit order consists of cottontails, jackrabbits, snowshoe hare, and a pika. Now I've never seen a jackrabbit track except in pictures, nor a pika. I don't have them in my area of the Northeast. So what I'm going to be concerned with today is the cottontail and the snowshoe hare, because I do have them here. It's one of the easiest sets of tracks to identify. We know that the front feet are smaller than the hind feet. The claws rarely show in a track. There's four toes in the front and four toes in the hind. You can see here, this is essentially what you're going to see. We know they have large hopping hind feet. Their feet are very furry, so that makes their toes indistinct and you're not going to see them that often. Their preferred gait is a half bound. Now let's go into the sizing in between them. So when you look at a track in the rabbit order, again, because of the, the amount of fur that are on their feet, you know, you're not going to so much get a lot of indentation from pads and things of that nature. So you're going to closely see something like this. Almost looks like a, a pretty flat imprint. And in the snow, obviously, it goes down deep. We mainly tell the type of animal it is by looking at the, the gait or his stride and it's usually a hopping stride. Now in a cottontail, you know, if you are lucky enough to find any type of definition in the track, you are going to notice that uh, the leading toe will be up higher and again that can help indicate the side of the body that that track is on. Obviously these are to the right again, that leading edge on that toe is up higher as it goes down. On the front foot of a cottontail, it's usually one inch in length on the average to about three quarters of an inch in width. And for the hind feet, you know, the larger hind feet of course being three inches and about one inches in width. The hopping stride on a cottontail when he's, you know, actually moving is about three feet. I don't have the greatest cast in the world. It is kind of difficult to see. This was cast in snow. You can see here's a foot here, here's a foot here. They would be the hind feet. Here's one front foot and here's the other front foot. Again, if I put it this way you may be able to see it a little bit better. Very difficult to get tracks um, on rabbits especially in snow but as you can tell you can see where there is a little bit of definition. Alright his whole group of prints is roughly about six and a half inches for that whole grouping. He's kind of a small little rabbit. Next set of video that you're actually going to see is you're going to see the impressions made by a cottontail uh, in deeper snow. And then I actually wound up getting some nice uh, shots of a rabbit while he was on new fallen snow, which had just, it was only a dusting. So you can see how flat the tracks actually are uh, as opposed to seeing imprints as you will with other tracks. So we'll take a look at that now and then we'll go into the snowshoe hare. Right. Perfect bound of a rabbit. Okay, it's a half bound.
as he's moving along down the trail. Uh, there you go, right here, fellas. Rabbit tracks, right on top of the snow. So the last uh, rabbit or hare that I'm going to discuss in this order is going to be the snowshoe hare. It's a pretty hardy little rabbit if you come across one, uh, especially to eat because they average about four pounds. So there's a lot of good meat on them. Their feet are actually in the wintertime completely covered by hair and they obscure the track completely whereas you won't see any toe pads whatsoever. I have seen them, I don't have examples of them. So again, I, you know, forgive me for that. The front feet are gonna appear more rounded, as you can tell here in this illustration, and they're larger than a cottontail considerably. We have a length on that track of about an average of one and three quarter inches by one and a half inches in width. And then the big difference is the hind feet where their hind feet are averaged at four and a half inches by three and three quarter inches. So it's a rather larger uh, animal. Again, it's to you know keep him up off the ground to allow him to, to get through the snow. His hopping stride can vary anywhere from three feet to six feet, depending upon how big the animal is and of course how fast he's traveling. Okay, so that's it for the rabbit order. Very quick video. I actually put it, geared it towards the examples that I have seen, and that's the way that I have to do it. Uh, it's easier for me to go through the physical characteristics of the tracks to give you those hints, and then it's up to you to discern what animals you have in your area that you need to go out and look for. All right. Again, I'm specifically talking in reference to the Northeast, with some you know, exceptions such as the wolf tracks that you've seen, the mountain lion track, and then eventually the grizzly tracks that you're going to see. Um, that's because I have them. I actually tracked them. I was in an area that allowed me to cast those tracks. The rest of it is here within the Northeast. So again, use your own knowledge. Use your own uh, resources to research what you have in your area. And then start designating the things that you need to look for. Um, so that's it for now. We're, we're going to continue to roll on. Uh, lots of other families to go through. And I hope you enjoy them. So this is Brian from Snowwalker Bushcraft. Thank you for your views and your comments. And until the next one, walk the woods.